Hey guys, Jesse Vartanian back here again with Maxon to bring you a whole new set of uh, tutorials because Maxon's been working hard with a whole new set of updates, both the Cineware 2.0 in After Effects and Cinema 4D R16, which has been a huge release this past September. So in the last set of tutorials, if you remember, we kind of went over um, the basic functions and features of the first version of Cineware. Um, with the compositor in mind, and also some uh, basic training on Cinema 4D Lite if you're kind of new to 3D and uh, Cinema 4D in general. So to kick off this series of tutorials, what I want to first go over is the updates to the new Cineware 2.0. So I'm going to go over each update individually, and to do so, I'm going to use a scene here that I threw together to show you how each feature works. So the first thing I want to talk about is the new default layer. So the first thing I want to do is uh, import my Cinema 4D project, and I'm going to go ahead and make a new comp just so we can bring it up. So this default layers that I'm talking about, basically when you're working in Cinema 4D, uh, first and foremost, you want to stay organized, right? But then your productivity, you want it to uh, be fast. And uh, in order to be fast, you can assign layers to different groups and objects within your scene. So say you have, uh, you know, you're building out uh, characters and, and an environment, you'll assign, uh, you know, specific characters to certain layers and then the environment uh, and, and different objects to their own layers as well. And then what you can do within Cinema is toggle those layers on and off and, um, you know, speed up your workflow and isolate, um, uh, you know, certain groups and again, stay organized. The great thing about the new Cineware 2.0 is it actually utilizes the layers that you create within uh, Cinema 4D, and you can toggle those on and off right in After Effects when you're working with Cineware 2.0. So I want to go ahead and show you how to do this. And you'll notice over here uh, in the effects control panel uh, under our Cineware effect, you have Cinema 4D layers and there's this box that you can check. Um, I can't actually go ahead and set any layers because I haven't in fact assigned any layers to the scene yet uh, because I want to go ahead and show you, uh, you know, brush up on how to do that and then we'll we'll come back in here and, and uh, you know, explore further. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my Cinema 4D scene, which I have right here, and uh, I grouped uh, pretty much everything um, for the purpose of this tutorial to kind of show you, you know, we have our room um, and then uh, we have this staircase that I actually grabbed from the new uh, content browser, which is pretty cool, and uh, the windows as well here. And so let's go ahead and just start adding these uh, to their own layers. So for the room, what I'm going to do is uh, twirl this down and just select all of these and right click and add to new layer. And um, in our layers tab here, it automatically creates uh, layers for everything. And I'm going to go ahead and call this room because that's what my group is. So now our room is a uh, is grouped and for the staircase I'll do the same thing. I'll go ahead and select all of these and uh, I'll add to a new layer and call this staircase and I'll do it for the spheres too. Okay, so for the pur purpose of this tutorial, um, I'm just going to make three layers so you get the gist of it. And uh, remember, we have to save our scene in order for anything to update back into Cineware. And I'm going to go ahead and jump back over to After Effects. And you'll notice all of a sudden we made a change uh, and it has to update in After Effects, which is a good sign. Now, if we go over to um, Set Layers, actually, what I want to do here... Go ahead and set layers. All of a sudden, you see, uh, you know, this drop down with select one or more layers, and we see all of the, the layers that we just created. Uh, we created three, and then there's this default layer, which automatically puts anything that wasn't assigned to its own layer into this default layer, um, which is really convenient. So now, uh, just to show you kind of how powerful this is, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck room and click OK. And just like that, we're isolating everything uh, without the room. 
and and that's really helpful actually if you know if we just want to focus on um, how these spheres are falling down the stairs we don't actually have to go ahead and render this entire environment um, we can work specifically with what we want to work with and you can go ahead and isolate uh, more than one layer at a time or you can turn them all off and just focus on one layer uh, depending on what you're trying to accomplish and uh, that's actually um, going to do it for uh, this uh, new layers feature within Cineware 2.0 and now we're going to go ahead and discuss automatic synchronization. So when I talk about automatic synchronization I'm referring to uh, multipass within Cineware and now with the the new update 2.0 um, you can parse out all of your multipasses like you could uh, in the previous uh, version as well. But now, uh, once you parse out all of your, uh, you know, your diffuse layer, your specular, your reflection, all your ambient occlusion, uh, things like that, there you have an option to um, update each layer simultaneously rather than having to select each layer and apply updates to, to each individual one. Um, with this automatic synchronization button, you can kind of do like a global change even if you have 10 different uh, layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and, it, it may be a little confusing, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do this. Uh, let me jump back into Cinema 4D here and I, I need to enable multipass uh, in order for this to work. And um, I'll just go ahead and add, add an object buffer and uh, assign something here. Let's just do the room. And I'll just enable an object buffer one there. What we have to do is save in order for our Cineware scene to update. And once we jump back into After Effects, we should see this working, which is a good thing. And I'm gonna change the render from software to draft. Sometimes it doesn't like using the software um, view when working with uh, multipass. And I also have, uh, remember I have some of my objects in the scene turned off. And uh, I'll just leave them turned off, that's fine. So under multipass here, we can enable uh, Cinema 4D multipass just as we could in version one. And uh, we'll go ahead and add our image layers. And now you'll see uh, again, just like in Cineware 1.0, we have uh, our diffuse, our specular, all of our multipass are broken down. And now we have uh, 12 layers here. And that's lovely. Um, I'm gonna ignore that. So up here, you're gonna see this new option, synchronized layer, which you would not find in version 1.0. It's it's completely new to uh, version 2.0. So with, uh, I'm gonna just select this layer here, uh, our diffuse layer, and you'll you'll notice synchronized layer is checked, and we're in our standard draft view. So um, let's go ahead and change that to software. Okay, just by changing our render view from uh, standard to software, if I scroll through these, you'll notice the renderer is set to software now on all 12 layers. In Cineware 1.0, this was not the case. You actually had to go through each one individually and change uh, change it accordingly, which could be uh, pretty tedious. So hopefully you can see uh, the, a huge time saver here. Now, if you did not want to uh, have one of, one of the layers uh, affected like that, all you have to do is uncheck synchronize layer now I can change, you know, just this specific uh, layer here to say a standard draft. Or obviously if you're gonna be, you know, compositing extensively, um, anything that, uh, you know, you change to just this layer will be affected to just this layer and then everything else. As long as you have the synchronized layer turned on, it will be applied to, uh, as more of a global um, application rather than the individual. Okay, so the region of interest is another huge update in Cineware 2.0. Uh, if you're an After Effects user, you uh, probably know what the region of interest is. If you're a Cinema 4D artist uh, and you don't use After Effects a lot, it's also similar to the interactive render region uh, within Cinema 4D. And so uh, you may be wondering why this is a huge update, but 
uh, with Cine uh, Cineware version 1.0, the region of interest actually uh, wasn't enabled. Now in version 2.0, you can actually use it, which is uh, a huge time saver, especially when you're working with 3D files and uh, Cinema 4D. Some Sometimes the renders can uh, be long, and being able to uh, render out exactly what you want to see within your comp and isolate um, you know, certain areas that you're working on is, uh, is huge in terms of especially the professional pipeline. All right, and, and that's actually um, all I'm going to go over for the region of interest. Again, some of these updates, um, you know, they're, they're pretty simple and, and quick, but they're so powerful and huge updates that we didn't uh, get in version 1.0. And uh, hopefully now you, you know, okay, wow, that's awesome. The region of interest is enabled in Cineware now. I'm definitely going to use that um, rather than just not knowing it and avoiding it altogether. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is uh, collecting your files for Cinema 4D assets. So if you remember in uh, Cineware 1.0, uh, at the end of a project, if you tried to collect your After Effects file that was using Cineware, um, it would only collect the Cinema 4D file itself and none of the corresponding textures. So if you were working with a client that asked you to deliver the um, all of the assets at the end of the job, this would make it difficult. Um, you know, if you're using a bunch of textures within Cinema 4D, you would have to go and track those down. So that's actually not the case anymore. In uh, Cineware 2.0, if you go ahead and collect your After Effects file, it will find um, all of the textures and, and everything uh, used from uh, Cinema 4D and bundle it into your collected After Effects project. And uh, I'll go ahead and just show you how to do that real quick. Um, it's just like any other save in After Effects. When you collect, you go down to uh, Dependencies and Collect Files. And it's going to go ahead and ask you um, to collect. And we'll say Collect. And I'll just save it here to my desktop. I'll just name this Test. Hit OK. And that should do it. So now, over in my desktop, uh, you'll see uh, we have our After Effects file collected, and then under Footage, we actually have the textures to go along with it. Now, um, I initially created this uh, scene uh, to show you some of the new features in Content Browser, so I used a lot of uh, materials and, and things from the Content Browser. Um, if you open this scene up, in uh, Cinema 4D, it will automatically track those textures down. All right, so that actually uh, finishes all of the major updates of uh, Cineware 2.0. And there's a, a couple, you know, here and there that you may find, like the uh, purge memory, which uh, Cineware actually uses an internal cache to store and render data now through um, using R16 as a render engine. So in Cineware, there's this new option called Purge Memory, which actually clears the cache data so that um, the RAM can actually be used for RAM uh, previews within After Effects. And I'll go ahead and just show you um, the, the Purge Memory is right here if you ever need to use it. And then another cool update is um, Cinema 4D Content Browser. Now, uh, if you're using a full version of Cinema 4D R16 uh, with Cineware, uh, 2.0, all of the textures will be read uh, properly within Cineware uh, 2.0, which wasn't always the case in version 1. So uh, again, if you're if you're pulling materials and objects and things like that from the uh, new content browser in uh, R16, all of those objects and textures should show up perfectly in the new Cineware and After Effects. Be sure to check out the other tutorials in this series where I go over the entirely new motion tracker never before seen in previous versions of Cinema 4D. I'm going to show you how I tracked in 3D objects to a scene that I shot on my iPhone. Completely revamped content browser where I go through all the new objects for motion graphics artists from gift boxes to kitchenware customizable infographics, high quality sports package, a completely rigged book with flipping pages, title sequence fly through setups, and uh, so many more. The entirely revamped bevel deformer, now non-destructive. I'm gonna show you how to take a simple primitive 
in 3D and make something completely different. The updated cogwheel feature, which has all new parameters where you can make your own custom gears and cogwheels. One of the biggest updates to R16, which is the reflectance channel. I'm gonna show you how I build a custom reflective material from scratch and apply it to a watch that I modeled. Thank you and I'll see you then.